two former This Morning presenters in a feud over a toxic culture. Eamon Holmes has tonight hit back, saying Philip Schofield was the source of the problem. I think Philip is absolutely right about toxicity, but my friend, the toxicity is not with me, Dan Wooten, or anyone else. The toxicity is with you. Also tonight, a leading charity warns vulnerable people could die if the Met Police stops responding to mental health emergencies. Plus, the three comedians' quest to stop sewage pollution at this beauty spot. And 70 years of summits, how the pursuit for the highest point on Earth still captivates adventurers. This is ITV News with Kylie Pentelow. Good evening. Former This Morning presenter Eamon Holmes has hit back at Philip Schofield, accusing him of being the source of a toxic culture at the show. ITV's flagship daytime programme returned today after a weekend of speculation over its future. Before it started, Schofield took to social media to deny claims of toxicity. But the controversy has continued to build throughout the day, and this evening things have become even more heated, as Ellie Pitt now reports. Well, hello. Morning. How was your weekend? As this morning returned, it was business as usual, until a turn to the newspapers meant the presenters could no longer avoid addressing the row taking place off air about what it's like to work on the show. From both of us and the whole team here, the crew, the guys downstairs, uh, we love making this show for all of you. Yeah, we really do. This is a happy place to work. I enjoy coming in here. Before today's programme had begun, ex-host Philip Schofield posted online. This morning is the best show to work on with the best people. In all the years I worked there, there was no toxicity. I think Philip is absolutely right about toxicity. But my friend, the toxicity is not with me, Dan Wooten, or anyone else. The toxicity is with you. And tonight, Eamon Holmes, who had shared the sofa with Philip when he announced he was gay, accused Schofield of being the source of the show's problems. Those who speak out against him, namely me, Amanda Holden, and you, you'll be included in the toxicity mm. that, that goes on. Dr Range too. Dr Range, of course, as mm. well. And um, you simply sit there and think, no, mate, you've had it all your way for too long. Over the weekend, another former presenter, Dr Range, revealed he'd gone to ITV bosses with concerns over the toxic culture at this morning. He worked on the show for 10 years, but says he was dropped after speaking out. In response to Dr. Ranj's comments, ITV said that after he made his complaint, they carried out an independent and external review, which found no evidence of bullying or discrimination. But personal brand expert Jennifer warns of the damage this very public spat between the former presenters could cause. A lot of what will be believed will be based on the credibility behind each person. And so normally you would say, you know, Philip Schofield's credibility, very high, people are going to believe him. But as I say, he's thrown a curveball at that credibility and that is knocked. So I think everything is really up in the air at the moment and people are just not knowing as audience. We, are, we just don't know who to believe. Bye. Bye. Philip Schofield left ITV last week after admitting he lied about an affair with a much younger male colleague. Despite his departure, the debate about the culture during his time at This Morning continues. Ellie Pitt, ITV News. A leading mental health charity has warned that people could die after the Metropolitan Police announced it will stop attending emergency mental health incidents unless there is an immediate threat to life. The force says it wants to free up officers to spend more time tackling crime. Sam Holder reports. Who is responsible for responding to a mental health emergency? not the police, according to the country's biggest force. From September, the Met will no longer respond to 999 calls about mental health unless there is a threat to life. The UK's biggest mental health charity is warning there isn't enough time to bring in such radical changes safely. My worst fears are that people will uh, lose their lives. I, I think that people who are in mental health crisis are often 
experiencing suicidal thoughts are often in the middle of uh, active self-harm. And so it does demand police paramedic intervention uh, urgently. The Metropolitan Police deal with five to six hundred incidents where someone ends up being sectioned under the Mental Health Act every month. For each, officers spend on average 10 hours. Across all police forces, it's almost a million hours a year. The Met believe the health service should be responsible for dealing with mental health emergencies and that police officers should instead focus on tackling crime. And they're not the first force to make that argument. Humberside saved more than a thousand police hours a month after they made a similar announcement. The difference is that was brought in over the course of more than two years and in conjunction with local hospitals, ambulance services, councils and charities. Former Met Superintendent Leroy Logan says the police must work with other authorities and be part of the solution. To pull out now, I think, uh, it is uh, a dereliction of duty because we know there's a mental health case, especially since COVID, and we need to have a response. I think that's extreme, it's unnecessary, and it's causing a lot of anxiety. Critics argue police powers make officers better equipped to deal with mental health situations and that a threat to life call can often only be made on the ground. That's been something that the police have done for, for 40 years. There's no other service that can step forward and fill that vacuum. There is broad consensus that frontline officers face too much of the mental health burden. But with already stretched health services, who will fill their shoes in just three months' time? Sam Holder, ITV News. The deadline's looming for ministers to decide whether to release unredacted WhatsApp messages and diaries belonging to Boris Johnson to the COVID-19 inquiry. The Cabinet Office has until 4pm tomorrow to respond or risk the prospect of legal action. For more on this, our political correspondent Libby Vina is here. Libby, these could affect many more people than ju just the former PM. Yes, well, I'm sure there's nothing that uh, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, would like more than to move on from talking about Boris Johnson and the pandemic. But the fact is, tomorrow he does face a momentous decision. Does he hand over the unredacted uh, diaries of uh, the former Prime Minister or does he fight it in the courts? Now, to hand over those diaries, I think, would be an unprecedented move. After all, Boris Johnson only left office last year, but at the same time, the pandemic was unprecedented in modern times. 200,000 people died. And Baroness Hallett, who is the inquiry chair, has made clear that she wants to see this evidence. Uh, she says that her inquiry would not be um, thorough if she didn't have access to all the uh, notes that were made at the time. Uh, this evening, the Liberal Democrats have also said that it would make a mockery of the process if these documents uh, weren't handed over. And campaigners for the bereaved say it's outrageous that uh, the Cabinet Office gets to decide what evidence is released. I think the danger for Rishi Sunak is that uh, if he does hold this uh, information back, he could be accused of covering up for Boris Johnson. Kayla Bivina, thank you. Celebrities have joined campaigners to highlight sewage pollution at Lake Windermere, England's largest lake. Comedians Steve Coogan, Paul Whitehouse and Lee Mack are backing calls to end all sewage discharges into the water, something they claim is a national scandal. Amy Welch reports. It's known as the crown jewel of the Lake District. Spanning ten and a half miles, Windermere is England's largest lake. But sewage is polluting its waters. Today, a trio of top comedians added their voice to a campaign to stop it. Uh, here to basically protest about the, uh, uh, the depositing of raw sewage and, and treated and untreated sewage into Lake Windermere. It is quite simple. Like, yeah. If you go to the toilet, it shouldn't end up in that beautiful lake. Right? Yeah, it's that, that simple, isn't it? This is one of the storm overflow pipes which feeds into Windermere and figures from the Rivers Trust show that last year 246 days worth of sewage spilled into the rivers and streams which end up in this lake. United Utilities owns the water treatment works that surround this lake and the sewage they deposit adds nutrients to the water which act as a fertiliser for algae. Last summer an algal bloom turned the lake bright green 
And when the algae dies, it rots, sucking oxygen out of the water that wildlife needs to survive. We want Windermere in the next 100 years to be the most pristine body of water in this country. We don't want to be seeing algal blooms. We want every single person in this country to be able to visit this place and marvel at what water can look like if it's free from pollution. United Utilities say the situation is complex and that there are multiple sources of nutrients, including agriculture and private septic tanks. In the last five years, they've halved the amount of phosphorus entering the lake and plan to reduce it even more. Meanwhile, the government say although the amount of sewage is unacceptable, this water is safe for swimming. If it got much worse, then it could be harmful to us as well as the fish and the animals in the river. Well, I used to be a skipper on the boats on Windermere, so I see the lake. I used to see the lake every day, and we could see the algae, we could see the dirt, we could see the filth going into it. Returning the lake to its natural state won't happen overnight, but campaigners say a long-term plan is vital to protect this World Heritage Site. Amy Welch, ITV News, Windermere. For Luton Town, it was 30 years in the making, and today they certainly celebrated in style. The people of the town packed the streets as their football team returned heroes. They won promotion to the Premier League after beating Coventry City on Saturday. Joe Cosham has this report. Some wanted the best vantage point of their hat as heroes, and who could blame them? They'd been waiting a while to see Luton back in the top flight. This one's even better. A sea of orange flooding the town centre to welcome their team home from Wembley. But supporters were made to wait a little while longer. This is why. Um, how hard have you been partying since Saturday, Pelly? Oh, I wasn't even late for the coach today, so... Um... But it was worth the wait. To watch the playoff trophy being lifted in the town St George's Square. It's the pinnacle of my career, really. You know, it's, um, I've done, I've achieved the target I've always wanted to achieve. Now it's time to, it's time to kick on. It's always Luton's always down in the dumps, and everybody's running it down. We've got an airport. We've got a fo Premier League football team. What else do the town need? I just see Luton in a prem like it's a big thing. We've been working hard for it, so it means a lot to all of us here, as you can see. Tom Lockyer watched on from his hospital bed after collapsing during Saturday's final. Tommy, 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 Tommy Lockyer. The crowd were in full song for their captain, while the town's manager entertained with a bit of Bon Jovi. Like the way it's meant to be. We know it's going to be a massive challenge, but we've got to enjoy this moment now. You've got, you just want to bottle it up, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to try and keep this feeling forever. We've not wanted this season to end, to be honest. Uh, and we've got to enjoy these times because they're few and far between in football. Preparations for the Premier League need to start at some point, but a bit like Saturday's match, Luton's party needs extra time. Joe Caution, ITV News. Now, for 70 years, Mount Everest has represented the pinnacle of mountaineering achievement. And today, Nepal honoured all of those Sherpa guides who've helped thousands of climbers to follow in the footsteps of Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. Carrie Davis reports. Ever since Mount Everest was identified as the Earth's highest peak, climbers have wanted to reach it. In Kathmandu today, celebrations to honour the men who did it first. New Zealander Sir Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay made it to the top in 1953 and came down heroes. Thousands have followed since then, many along a very similar route, including Rebecca Stevens, who became the first woman to reach the summit in 1993. Hillary actually said, you know, nobody's going to be interested in Everest again now that it's climbed. And we know 70 years on, that isn't right. Uh, but, you know, lots of people still are fascinated by Everest. Although increasingly accessible for those willing to pay, it remains dangerous. Twelve have died this season and five others are missing. Overcrowding has been blamed for increasing the risks and conditions are deteriorating with rising temperatures. 70 years after his father's historic feat, Sherpa Norgay's son has a warning for the future. Between uh, the mountaineering industry uh, having perhaps fewer uh, Sherpas uh, being able to, wanting to go up there because of, uh, of how difficult it is and, you know, climate change, uh, you know, it not, might not be that sustainable. Since the first summit, the evolution of Mount Everest has been dramatic. 
and will continue. Carrie Davis, ITV News. Well, that's it for tonight. The uh, national weather forecast is coming up next, but from all of us here, whatever you're doing, enjoy the rest of the evening. Good night. First thing today will be lovely and warm. And by breakfast time, it could be on the sunny side. Heinz Tomato Ketchup, no added sugar and salt, sponsors ITV National Weather. Good evening to you. After sunny skies for many of us through the long bank holiday weekend, yet more fine, settled, sunny weather to come into a new working week and a new month. Just a little cooler where we've got a brisk, blustery breeze and a little more cloud. And another chilly night, particularly in rural spots. A touch of mist and murk developing across northern Scotland, northern Ireland. A little more cloud for central and eastern spots. A brisk breeze here to start the new day. Otherwise clear and crisp from the word go. Some lovely sunshine into Tuesday, but we've got that cloud cover reluctant to budge across those central and eastern locations. and. The cloud will peg those temperatures back just a few degrees, a cooler, fresher feel to the day here, together with that chilly, brisk breeze from the near North Sea. Elsewhere, a very different theme. That sunshine making all the difference, lifting temperatures a fair few degrees. In sheltered sunny spots, highs of 23 or 24 degrees, peaking in Western Scotland. See you soon. Have a good night. Heinz Tomato Ketchup, no added sugar and salt, sponsors ITV National Weather. ITV London, weekday weather. Is sponsored by Octopus Electric Vehicles. Car, charger, and energy. Hello again. I hope you've had a lovely bank holiday weekend, whatever you've been up to. We've seen some cloud building across parts of the southeast and certainly London this afternoon, and breezy conditions developing. It does mean we're in for a mild night tonight, and this week across the board, our weather will be staying dry. Plenty of sunshine to look forward to from Wednesday onwards, but the next day or so perhaps a little cloudy. Temperatures picking up through the week, but starting on the cool side. There's the high pressure in charge of things across all of the UK, and there's very little rain in the forecast for up to the next 10 days. There'll be cool breezes along eastern coasts as we go through the next few days and nights, and some mistiness here and there, but it stays dry, with temperatures beginning to pick up from Wednesday, certainly. Back to this evening's details and after a quiet, clear start to the night, a bit of an infill of cloud through the early hours of Tuesday morning and a fair breeze picking up as well. It does mean we're free from frost, 8 or 9 Celsius the overnight low, a few shallow mist patches here and there as we go into the early hours of Tuesday morning. A dry start to the day tomorrow across the board, if a little cloudy. Breezy conditions as well, just clipping temperatures. You certainly need a cardigan or a light jacket if you're out and about first thing. Sunshine will get out through the day. And in the sunshine, out of the breeze, it should feel quite pleasant. 18, 19, maybe 20 degrees during the afternoon. So not a very warm day, but pleasant out of that wind. Looking towards tomorrow night, slightly more cloud building once again, but some better news gradually as we go through the rest of the week, if you like sunshine. During Wednesday, perhaps a little dull again, 20 Celsius, but from Thursday, you'll notice a real difference. More sunshine for the southeast in general and temperatures beginning to pick up. ITV London weekday weather is sponsored by Octopus Electric Vehicles.